Hi everyone, uh, let us talk today about the difference between PGTA and PGD. Uh, they are commonly used, you know, synonymously. Uh, we tend to think it is the same. Let us try and understand the basic difference between the two. So PGTA or PGS is the pre-implantation genetic screening of embryos where we are just trying to see if randomly by chance an embryo is not chromosomally abnormal in IVF and therefore it should not be transferred. However, PGD is pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. It is usually done for some kind of a genetic defect that we know uh, to be there in the couple. So if I try to explain, uh, see any woman or as a couple as we are aging, there is a tendency for eggs and sperms to become chromosomally abnormal during their division and therefore an embryo might be chromosomally abnormal. It's a random chance it can happen in anybody but its chance increases as age goes up. So especially as the woman's age goes up above 35, we say that every month we don't conceive, every IVF we don't conceive or our risks of miscarriages are going up primarily because some of these embryos may be not chromosomally abnormal even when they implant or that's the reason they're not implanting. However, PGD is a completely different thing where we say, for example, uh, rarely speaking, a couple say has a thalassemia minor trait. So both husband and wife are absolutely normal and healthy couples. However, they have a particular gene issue uh, in them, both of them, so that it leads to an incompatibility when a baby is born. So for example, if both the couples have thalassemia minor, as we call it as a genetic trait, it's not a disease, then 25% of their children may have a major disease, which is known as thalassemia major. Similarly, there are many other such diseases that are there. There is sickle cell anemia, there is hemophilia. There are a couple of genetic disorders which may have a very high uh, you know, level of uh, coming uh, into the progeny. Again, there are things known as translocations, which means rarely speaking, in either of the husband or wife, there is a translocation in one of the chromosomes. So they have a completely normal set of chromosomes. But once it comes down to the level of the egg or sperm, there is an unequal division because of which the embryo tends to become chromosomally abnormal. In such cases, IVF with PGD is a boon because if they keep trying on their own naturally, then it's just a random chance that, you know, whether depending on their percentage of recurrence, uh, whether the normal embryo will implant or not. So unfortunately, if somebody's had such kind of prior history, it is very much now possible to actually weed out the genetically abnormal embryos, which means jo embryos teak nahi hai, we will detect them before conception and we will only implant the normal embryos. So PGD is specifically done for some genetic diseases or it's called PGTSR or PGT, you know, when it's a specific structural relocation, uh, you know, uh, translocation that we are looking at. So therefore, PGD is applied to very, very specific subset of patients who have a genetic disease. However, overall to increase IVF rates, overall to decrease the risk of miscarriage or in women with advanced age, where we want to, you know, make sure we're putting in chromosomally normal embryos, that is where a technology called PGS or PGTA is done. So I hope that basic difference between PGTA and PGD uh, is now, uh, you know, we understand the difference. Thank you very much.